Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 839. And if you want to download this workbook 836 to 847, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video here, actually I'll go over to the answer sheet. What we want is standard deviation of these percentages, but we want to list the standard deviation at every change in date. So as we go down this column, as soon as there's a 916, I want to calculate the standard deviation for all of the values that are 916. So this one goes down to like here, right? For this, I need to calculate all of the 8. If there's an 1819 in this column, the date, then I need to calculate the standard deviation on those values. I'm going to show you two ways. First way, we'll use the STDEV now. STDEV, this function down here is compatibility function. This is what we used in earlier versions to do standard deviation of a sample. This is the one we use in 2010. There's the P in earlier versions. These are called compatibility. These, this is the P in uh, 2010 and later. So I'm going to go ahead and use the new function. You're welcome to use that one down there. Now, I don't want to calculate standard deviation on all of these values, just some of them. And there's a condition, so I'm going to put the IF function. The logical test, I'm going to say anything in this column, click there, Control Shift Down Arrow, F4 to lock it. Anytime anything in that column is equal to relative cell reference, 1, 2. What do I want? Remember, the if is I'm, I'm having a condition to dump some values into STDEV. Logical test, comma, value of true. Well, everything from this column that meets the condition from this column. All right, I hit F4. I don't need the false. Close parentheses on that. There's the if. So the if function, in essence, if I highlight this and hit the F9 key, it's going to isolate not all the values, values, just the ones that are in 819. Standard deviation will ignore those falses. Now this is an array formula. And why? Because that logical test, usually you give it a single true or false. We gave it a bunch. And so this is an array formula, which you have to enter with Control, Shift, and Enter, not just Enter. The curly brackets are Excel saying, hey, I understood you entered this as an array formula. Double click and send it down. All right, so it looks like it's working, except for I have a bunch of numbers there. I don't want those. So I'm going to put another if. If one, two cells to my left and one up is not, and not is less than, greater than, not equal to this. So anytime there's a change in value in this column, right? So when I copy this down, it'll next calculate right here because this is not equal to that. And we'll put the value right there. Anytime that's true, what do I want? That calculation. Otherwise, I want to show a blank. This is actually a, a null text string, so it will be sitting in the cell, but it will show nothing. Control Shift and Enter. Double click and send it down. Now, another way we could do this is instead of uh, using that if, we could just kind of build a dynamic range that would know to only go down this far. And then when we get to this next change in value in the A column, it'll know, it'll create a dynamic range that'll go that far. OK, so you ready? Equals STDEV. Again, you could use, if you're in earlier versions, just use that little bit there. They calculate the same exact answer. Right. Now, what do I want? Well, if it's a dynamic range and I'm sitting right here, I want to start here. And I'm going to type a colon, backspace. I want to go from B2 all the way down to B8. I'm going to, after the colon, type index function. The cool thing about index is if you put it the index function into the context of a cell reference, meaning cell reference colon Excel is expecting a cell reference. If you put index into that context, it will look up a cell reference. So here's the column we're looking the cell reference up in. Control Shift Down Arrow F4, comma, that's the array. And now the row number. Well, right now I need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7, the seventh value. So I need a row number of 7. So I'm simply going to do match. I'm going to look up relative cell reference within this whole range. Control Shift Down Arrow F4. Now wait a second. There's duplicate. Well, the final argument, comma, if you use this first one, it's an approximate match. And if we leave it, sorry, if you use that, it's an approximate match. But the default is that. So if I leave it off, it'll default to an approximate match. And guess what? 
if there's an approximate match and we have duplicates, it just keeps going until it finds the last item, which will give me 7, which will be used to extract that cell reference. All right, so I'm going to close parentheses on the match. Close parentheses. There's the row number, 7, right? Close parentheses on that. Now watch this. If you highlight the index, just the index without the colon and cell reference and hit F9, it gives me the value. That's what index usually does, Control-Z. But if you highlight it in the context of expecting a cell reference and hit F9, you see it gives you all the values, Control-Z. Now that is not an array, so we just Enter or Control-Enter, no curly brackets. Double click and send it down. Again, we need to still do one final thing, equals if. There's a change in column A. Then please run that as the value of true. Otherwise, null text string, which will show up as blank. And then double click and send it down. All right, uh, we'll see you next trick.